So let's see how we're going to use that here. Well, we need to know what all of the uh, variables stand for here. The most important thing to know what it stands for, what does D stand for here? The distance between the slits. Yeah. D in this chapter always stands for the distance between the slits. That's good. So is that 1 over 500? Okay, good, yeah. So yeah, you remember when you talked about that uh, last time. So uh, now we can start, I think we have enough information now to start uh, doing some uh, calculations here. So theta is 20.2. Yep, they just gave us that angle. So we know that our theta is going to be 20.2 degrees. And how do you know m equals 1? It says first order. That's right. That's that coded information. When they say first order, that means m equals 1. Good. Okay. Now we always have to take care of the units. Is there anything here that wasn't in standard units? Oh, Right, so how can we deal with that? So, 500 times 1,000. Okay. Plus 5 times into the fifth lines per meter. So, I'd say, you say 5. So, you say 1 over 5 times into the fifth. Good. Okay, so you plugged in this for D, because we know if there's fi um, if there is uh, 50,000 lines in a meter, um, then the, if that one meter is split up into this, uh, this much distance for each pair of lines. This tells us the distance between each pair of slits. Uh, then you just multiplied it. All right, so I got the same answer as you did for D sine theta. Observed wavelength. The actual. How did you decide that? Because it's, uh, it's the same hydrogen line observed as wavelength of 656. Let's uh, go back to our example here. So, who's playing the role of the car here? What's the car in this problem? Go back and read the problem carefully. Take your time. Going from edges to galaxy. So, who's the car? The galaxy. Yeah. So, the car here, I don't know how to draw a galaxy. Maybe it's a spiral galaxy. So here's the distant galaxy. Here's the distant galaxy and the galaxy is sending out light. All right. And then they observed the spectral line of hydrogen, right? In the grating, they observed the spectral line of hydrogen. Uh -huh. Now, where is the where is that light coming from that they observed? On Earth. Oh, the galaxy is coming from the galaxy. Yeah, they didn't quite spell that out, but they're implying that the spectral line of the hydrogen that was at twenty point two degrees. They're implying that that was from that galaxy. Yeah. So, this wavelength um, is the wavelength of the light that the, we are observing from that galaxy. This is the L prime. Mm -hmm. What was the so what was the original wavelength? Well, that would just be the same wavelength as we would observe on Earth. That's like the rest wavelength. So we know that if we observe hydrogen on Earth, it has a wavelength of 656 nanometers. Well, that's the wavelength you see when things are not moving relative to each other, right? Because when we're on Earth, we're not moving uh, relative to the source over there. So what does, who's equal to 656 nanometers? L or, um, lambda or lambda prime?
we just figured out that the spectral line of the light from the galaxy, that observed wavelength was 6.9 times 10 to the negative 7. But we know that uh, if we were observing it at rest, like we can do on Earth, it would be 656. All right. So this whole thing with the diffraction grading was just to get the observed wavelength. The whole thing here was just to figure out the observed wavelength. And now this becomes really a Doppler effect uh, equation. So um, let's see here. Let's first of all figure out, well, first of all, um, we have to put these in the same units. So how can we put these in the same units? Um, six, five, six, divided by 10 to the ninth. What's that going to give us? Because uh, six point five six times 10 to the negative 7. Meters. So now we have to decide is the galaxy moving toward us or away from us? situation over here that we discussed. Um, that means we're assuming a, we're of seeing a bigger wavelength, so we must be getting a smaller frequency. Why is the light hitting us with only a very low frequency? Because the galaxy is running away from us. If the galaxy was throwing baseballs at us, the baseballs wouldn't hit us very frequently if the galaxy was running away from us at the same time. Yeah. So it looks like we're on this side over here. Okay, now what? We know V? No. Oh, it was V light. V light. Yeah, because this is light that we're observing from this galaxy, right? In the examples I was giving you, know, I was talking about baseballs and sound and stuff. But this problem is about, uh, you can see at the very start of the problem, light from a distant galaxy. Well, we can always assume we know the speed of light. So you say 3 times 10 to 8 equals F times. I guess something a little bit different, but that we're probably just rounding off different. So, uh, oh, no, I'm not rounding off different, I'm just making a mistake. So let's try that. I put in 5, 6, 4.57. Good. And you labeled which one was F and uh, which one was F prime. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so we know here now from doing the algebra that just like you said, F is 4.57 times 10 to the 14th, and f prime 4.34 times 10 to the 14th. OK, uh, you're almost sure to have to use this on the test, this v equals f lambda. So this is a key equation. What do they love to do? They love to give you the wavelength and ask you for the frequency, or give you the frequency and ask you for the wavelength. Well, since we know the speed of light, we can do that. All right, well, now what? How does it help us to know these frequencies? Take your time and you tell me. What does V wave stand for? The speed of the light. Yeah. Well, do we know that? How is that different than source, though? Ah, well, you tell me. Yeah, wh what is the difference? So this stands for the speed of the light. And what does, this, what does V source stand for here? 
That's right. Well, those are very different things. That's like with our little car example. Let's go back to the car example to make sure we understand that. Um, remember, there was a siren here. So what would V wave stand for for the car and the siren? The, the, the wave of the siren. The what, what is the wave here? What type of wave is it? In the this? sound wave? Yeah. That would, the V wave would be the speed of the sound wave. And what would V source be for this example? Speed of the car. That's right. So obviously the car is not moving at the speed of sound or it would create a sonic boom or whatever. So the source is moving at a diff very different speed than uh, the wave is. So that's the same deal here. The galaxy is not moving at the same speed as the light. So these are definitely different speeds. So it's important when you write this equation to really write out what each of these stands for. 